Hello anyone and everyone, I am Echo and today we are exploring abduction. So we're here in the mayor's office up in the tower. Or eh, actually no, we're not up in the tower. We're at the bottom of the tower. The tower goes up up there. So but we're we're in the base of the tower and we've got a bit of stuff to be checking out. I just thought to see if we could open up the drawers on his desk. Doesn't seem like we can. Also, his desk looks like it's falling apart, which is kind of a nice detail, I think, actually. Um, the whole thing, like, everything in this place is very sort of ramshackle, put together haphazardly. Oh, and there's two notes down there as well that we didn't read. I'm going to read these first, because I think I'm more likely to forget these. So... Okay. Mr. Mayor, at your behest, here's the information pertaining to the bleeder, its history, and some of the engineering behind it. The bleeder project was designed and built at the request of Mayor Sims to collect and dissipate the ever-increasing power in the entire ecosystem. Mayor Sims was reluctant to allow the system to come to fruition as he, and others, had become suspicious of Mayor Farley's death. He believed that without knowing more precisely what would happen to the cell wall at fruition, it was ill-advised to allow it to possibly open, thus allowing what might be outside in and what might be inside out. Okay. This system has the capacity to throttle all four connected worlds. The idea, as you are well aware, is to suppress the ecosystem power and thus inhibit full maturity of the trees. It was postulated, and since became apparent, that this suppression will keep whatever unknown maturity process from happening and grant us direct control over the tree fruition. Okay. The rate of dissipation is sensed and regula regulated automatically. The power is collected through the lane engineering extruded cables that attached directly to the dome membranes. When the maximum power triggered, creating an electrical charge followed by a discharge into the water through ele electrosis, an amount of hydrogen and oxygen is generated. We captured some of these elements for our own use, but the great, the great majority is released into our atmosphere. This gassing might be a cause for concern were it not for the ecosystem's ability to filter and maintain our atmosphere at near ideal levels. Excess hydrogen and oxygen content and pressure generated by the process is rebalanced quickly by the membrane. And as you know, we discourage swimming when the bleeder is operational. Okay. So something about that tower, I guess the tower is called the bleeder, which is a weird name for it, but whatever. So the name for that so or for the, that big tower um seems to basically be a device um with the intention of removing the barrier um or maybe not removing the barrier but feeding power to it until it reached reached fruition yeah Yeah, basically collect the excess power in the ecosystem and put it into the barrier. And then that would possibly... <coughs> <clears throat> that would possibly allow them access to the other four worlds, it seems. Yeah, the system has the capacity th to throttle all four connected worlds. The idea, as you are well aware, is to suppress the ecosystem power and thus inhibit full maturity of the trees. It's postulated and blah, blah, blah. So maturity process from happening grant us direct control over tree fruition or or maybe that's saying they they want what what they were intending to do it seems was to control how the trees grew but by the sounds of it it's going to help us to do to probably access the other worlds or generally do something with the barrier that we have to do. I think CW uh, wanted us to basically take down the barrier and remove it. That seems like a probably a good step towards doing that. Alright, let's read the journal now. This looks just like the, uh, the missed journal. Oh well. Alright, 17125AH. 
Special Counsel Session 2 discussed final approval of Farley's plan with regard to the imminent attack. The full council vote was unanimous. Whew. And I gave my final approval. Preparations update. Farley says that tunneling is almost complete. Uh, Tham informs us that the Vlains just completed their construction and have started testing. Special Counsel Session 12. No one attended. I will inquire as to reason for their absence. Okay. It appears that the council members feel like we're having too many meetings. Since the plan has been approved, perhaps we can reduce our meetings to every two days for now. While I was asking Cecil about his absence, I also inquired about securing the tower. Okay. Special Council Session 13. Cecil will provide a new key code for the tower lock in the next few days. Cecil was concerned about any survivors not having access, so it was decided that we would conceal the code in Farley's house and give the residents the location as they were being chambered. I also had him change the upper tower access code. A clue to that code has been placed under the direction of our first mayor. Okay. Under the direction of our first mayor. Oh, okay. I know what that means. Uh, let's just read the rest of it first. I've decided, uh, 17129AH, I've decided to bring some of the more important mayor's logs with me for chambering, specifically the initial Hunrath log, and then the logs that document the history of our conflict with the Mofang. I, oh, so they had a conflict with the Mofang. Okay, up to this point, they keep talking about the war they were in, the battle and whatever. They haven't said who it was with, so it seems it was with the Mofang? I would think we would have an extra chamber available for historical documents. Special Counsel Session 14. Only Tham attended. He informed me that because of the dire circumstances, the others were either extremely busy or not inclined to have long discussion about the situation. I told him I would suspend the regular council, Special Counsel Sessions, and we would simply meet as the need arose. I paid a visit to Farley today. I asked her to check on the availability of a chamber for the documents. I've spent the last few days collecting documents. I've divided them into two categories, chambered and vaulted. The vaulted are less important, but obviously worth making an effort to save. They can be moved into Farley's vault area. The vaulted category will also include any books that we've managed to blah blah blah. With less than a week remaining before chambering begins, the population is tense. We've had several town hall meetings to try to answer any questions, but the realities of the current situation make it difficult to assuage fears. Farley has informed me that there is one final confirmation from Shavar. Uh, if Farley doesn't hear from her by the end of 14141AH, then there is no turning back. There is an odd justice to Farley's plan in that whatever the Mofang bastards send to kill us will be returned back to them. Hmm. Special Council Session 15. A special meeting was called to go over the plans for the final time. Farley had several instruction sheets to distribute. The Mofang weapon and illustration, a list of blah, blah blah Farley tells me that there will be at least one chamber available for historic documents, and any other extra chambers will be loaded with emergency provisions and medications in case either Hunrath or Marae are completely destroyed. No word from Shavar. No word from Shavar. Death is on our doorstep. Curse the Mofang devils to hell. I'm leaving to be chambered. This journal will remain here to inform any future souls of what our last days were like. Okay. So yeah, that's basically what it was like during, as he said, their last days before the battle, before everything sort of fell apart. Um, so Cecil provided a new key code for the lo lower lock uh, certain, uh, it's for the access to the upper tower, I believe. Yeah, I also had him change the upper tower access code. A clue to that code has been placed under the direction of our first mayor. Yes, well, as you can see here, mayors, Luther Roscoe, 500BH, 23BH. So, Luther Roscoe. Either we need to do Five zero zero three, or is it C Carl Hunrath? Because the town was named after Carl Hunrath. Maybe L Luther Roscoe. Hmm. Because that's not six numbers. That's it's a six-digit code that we need for the upper tower access. 
zero one zero two zero three or not three I'm, i don't know why i said that whoops anyway um all right you know what let me just write down both of these because i think these are probably going to be helpful so luther is five zero zero and three and uh there's also there's a dash in between the last zero and the three because that's the separated time i don't think that's important but just in case and there's also an equals sign not it's not actually an equal sign it's like a uh, it's a squiggly one, so I think that means about 500 bh. So that might be important. I don't know. And then Carl uh, is 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, which means going back to the tower. This is, let me read this over real quick one more time. Um, yeah, it appears that the council members feel like we're having too many meetings since the plan, blah, blah, blah. A few days from now, while I was asking Cecil about his absence, I also inquired about securing the tower. Cecil will provide a new key code for the lower lock in the next few days. Cecil was concerned about any survivors not having access, so it was decided that we would conceal the code in Farley's house and give the residents the location as they were being chambered. I also had him change the upper tower access code. Yeah. Okay. So I believe the one that they're talking about in Farley's house is the thing that we got 406 from. Um, and we were able to get into the tower that that way. That's how we got in here. Um, but then the upper tower access would be separate. And for that, we need to go back through the teleporter to get the other side of the wall. Um, and that's really weird that uh, if it's going from 500 to 3 AH, 500 BH to 3 AH, or whatever it was, um, obviously that's not six digits, that's uh, it's two digits short. So, ooh. do we have to like fill in the blanks or something? I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, we'll see. We'll see, we'll try it out. I'm gonna try Carl's first because his is six digits without the uh, dash. And I'm not sure what would count as the dash anyway. Oh wait a minute, actually, if we're doing it on the rotary thing, we can't do dashes at all. So that doesn't make any sense. So yeah, it definitely can't be that. All right, let's just do, all right, zero first. All right, that should be zero, zero, then one zero, then two, two, zero, okay. Two, two, zero. Nope, that is not it. All right. So clearly, Carl is out. Sorry, Carl Hunrath. So, Luther. <sighs> Let me try five, zero, zero. That'd be 500. Then what about two zeros to fill in the place before the three? Because sometimes, depending on how you write things, like um, sometimes when you write in a date, you put a single zero before the day, if it's like, you know, the third of the month or something like that. Maybe doing something similar to that? Nope, okay. All right, in that case, there's one more idea I have. And if this is if this is the uh, the solution, then holy crap! What an amazingly designed puzzle. Um, so what I'm thinking is, let me go find Luther's last name. I need to get back into the tower, find out his last name, real quick, 
really quick. Man, I wish I could move faster or something. Now, well, not moving faster. Just wish I was better at uh, talking constantly when there's nothing going on. <laughs> I'm not good at that. That's why I can't play a lot of uh, types of games. Games where I can, uh, games like this, like point-and-click adventure games, where I can talk about what I'm doing and theorize about what I'm supposed to be doing. That gives me lots of stuff to talk about. Okay, Luther Roscoe. Okay, let me write that down so I don't forget it. Roscoe. Luther Roscoe's Modern Life. Okay. And... Uh, let me see. What's the best way down to get over there? I think if I just go right out the front here, that would be quickest to get there. So we're going to go to the graveyard. Because here's what I'm thinking. Every single one of the graves is labeled with the name. If we can find Luther Roscoe, maybe the date he died is the code. Or maybe we'll be able to find something else on his grave, perhaps? Not sure. We'll see. Let's just look at them all. Okay. Uh, something Hartnell, Benjamin Sims. What the heck? Why is this one covered up? Well, not really covered up, I guess, but... That's annoying. There's nothing... Like, they put a new sign on, like they did with Benjamin Sims, but they didn't write anything new on this. That's really... That's dumb. Um, how many numbers is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, it looks like there's eight numbers under that, so I'll say it's not that for now. Margaret Hartnell, Anna Jackson, Daniel Hartnell. Any more graves down there? Nope. Doesn't seem like it. Up here, though. Daniel Hartnell. Carl Hunrath, loved by all, John Farley and Robert Hartnell, Luther Roscoe. Okay. Come on, Luther, don't let me down. What have you got? Okay, there's some numbers there, but I can't see them well at all. Oy vey. Um... I was gonna say maybe the date that he died was the answer. Is there anything else like from this position that we can see that might tell us? Um, let's read the other graves real quick. Mary Hartnell, John Hartnell, Ida Mantines or whatever her name is. Oh, okay, Luther Roscoe. Damn it, I can't read those numbers at all. Kind of... Okay, I'm gonna have to kind of guess, I think. Looks like a one. One, zero, three... Something... Something... Something. Great. Fucking amazing. Oh my god. And we can't... I'm already trying. We can't pick this up and move it or anything? Hmm... <sighs> Maybe if we get a bit farther away... There's no crouch. From farther away, that third number doesn't even look like a three anymore. It looks kind of like a seven. Uh, 
Oh, Jesus. Okay. Kind of looks like 431 are the next ones. And the first three might be a 7, because it kind of looks like that from far away. Alright. I'll try that next, I guess. Also, Carl Hunrath. I know he's not actually the first president, or first mayor. Yeah, there's no no numbers on visible on his at all. All right. Huh. <sighs> so then, uh, back up. Yeah, back up through the tree to get up there. My freaking chair's falling down on its own. Nothing's going right today. Nothing at all. I swear. All right. Oh, we don't know where Luther Roscoe lived, do we? No, he probably would have stayed in the in the mayor's office, the tower. So that wouldn't help. Okay. We could look around here a little bit more, though. Maybe. Hmm. I don't know. Is there nothing else? Maybe in these books? None of them are even labeled. Let alone, can we look at them? Okay. Alright, alright. Well, let's just uh, go back across. We gotta get to the other side of the tower to try and put in the, this code. This code that I really don't... <laughs> don't have a lot of confidence in in not only my ability to copy the code down but also in the uh, in the likelihood that I even guessed right on what the code is supposed to be we still got this area over here that I have to look at too so I don't want to forget that all right Over. Oh, we have to have to remember to turn this too and check out the other side of the river. Oh, there's so much to do. I love it, honestly. I like as long as there's options. I don't consider myself stuck. And when I get stuck, that's the only time I get frustrated with a game like this. Any point-and-click adventure game, really. It's only when I'm stuck and it seems like I've tried everything. That's when I get annoyed. Okay, so one. Zero. Alright, let's get closer. One. No, that's a two. Fuck. Alright, now I gotta reset the whole thing. Because there's no button to reset it quickly. No, of course, that would be two freaking. Yeah, okay. One. Zero. Then. Three, four, three, one. Three, four, three, one. Nope. Okay, so let's try one, zero, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Instead of the three, four, three, one, four, three, one. Nope. Okay. Awesome. So this is not going to work at all. Awesome. Great. Fantastic. So a clue to the code. He actually said a clue to the code, not the code itself, lies with the first mayor. Or was given to the first mayor. Uh, <laughs> Alright, let's go up here one more time. Let me read the exact way he worded it. Because if only a clue to the thing was given to the mayor, to the first mayor, then. Then that would be. I guess. <sighs> <laughs> it wouldn't really help me, actually. That wouldn't really help me figure it out. But it would at least confirm that I'm on the wrong path. 
technically, while also still being on the correct path. So that's great. A clue to that code has been placed under the direction of our first mayor. Holy shit. Hold up. I just noticed, literally just now, as I was walking over here to pick this up, I just noticed that says Roscoe on it. That compass that was going crazy all over the place has the name Roscoe on it. And that freaking... Oh, this fucking chair, stay up, please. A clue to the code has been placed under the direction of our first mayor. The direction. Direction meaning a compass. Okay. So this thing was moving all over the place, not because it's just a broken compass. It's moving all over the place because it's pointing to something. I don't know. Let's try it, I guess. So, okay, it's spinning so much I can't even keep track of where it's pointing. Okay, so, obviously the fancy looking bit is pointing to north, and obviously the clue wouldn't be north, 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 but I'm thinking if it's spinning around some kind of pattern, and maybe whatever is pointed at the top, because we can't, we can't turn this around as much as we, oh wait, actually, yeah, we kind of can. Crap. Shit, 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 shit. Okay. Or can we? I can't... I can't freaking tell if we can turn around or not. Um... Oh my god! <laughs> Never mind. Overthinking it again. North Carolina. What's that mean? Write it down anyway. North Carolina. Okay. Um. Oh my god, wait a minute. I think I'm figuring it out in real time. I've activated Zawardo and I'm just going crazy for it. Um. Okay, hold up. So. Okay. It's under the direction of the mayor. We look at the thing. I was overthinking it. I was thinking we had to, like, copy down the directions that the thing was pointing at in some kind of pattern. Um, but then there's the, just the sticker under it. So, again, I'm overthinking it. But these things, these license plates, there's a reason this is here. We need to find a North Carolina license plate in the garage. And that will have the code on it, I bet. Oh, my God. Oh my freaking god. That's so good though. That's so unbelievably good. Alright. Let's see. Uh, Penna, Florida. 10,000 Lakes, Minnesota. District of Columbia, Arizona. California. Uh, New York, Rhode Island, North Carolina. And Colorado. Okay, so North Carolina. Um, you can't put letters into the thing. So the NT, I'm not sure how that's going to fit in there, but we'll write it down anyways in case it helps. N NT 6403 and then 51 because it says North Carolina 51. So let's, uh, let's, for now, let's ignore the NT part. Let's just go back up there, and let's try to put in the, the numbers on there, including the 51 at the end. And we should also try it with the 51 at the start, just in case, though that, that wouldn't make any logical sense, 
but you know, oh well, they're trying to hide the code and all that. So, you know, maybe they would go that extra step just to make it more confusing. You know, and, and so far, some of these puzzles are puzzles that, um, like, if you think about it, like, well, actually, no, even, even without the context of them having to, you know, put everything in code because of a, of the big battle and everything, even without that context there, um they're still providing enough clues that it does make some sense for them to to do all this you know or, or or well not sense for them to do it it makes sense that the player could still be expected to figure it out you know so yeah i'm not saying it very clearly but whatever all right get this stupid thing over here so six one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, four, zero. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Three, five, one. Nope. Okay. Um five one six four zero three no fuck <laughs> okay so how do we put nt in NT, what's the, <sighs> hmm, because NT, it, what, what, what's the number, what number, we can't do anything past, like, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, we can't do either of those, we can't do, like, the number equivalent of saying, like, oh, N is the eighth number, or eighth letter in the alphabet, so, put 8 instead of N, and then T is the fourth letter in the alphabet. We can't do anything like that, because neither of those are the first nine letters of the alphabet. So, that doesn't work. So how do we put in an NT? And is it even for this door? I mean, it has to be, right? Unless there's a separate door that we haven't found yet. And maybe just the 6403 is, uh, yeah, maybe just the 6403 is a four-digit code. We can ignore the NT and the 5-1. And... And maybe there's just a completely separate door that we can go to. It's actually, I think it's quicker to go down this way to get to the garage. Yeah, it's got to be, because we don't have to run across the other half of the wall to get here. So yeah, let me go down to the garage and look at this one more time before I end the episode, because I'm out of time. I've gone way over the time that I intended. Oh well. Oh well. Um, yeah, let me just look at this thing again real quick. And let me see. North Carolina... Fifty one six four zero three NT. Um Nice try, North Carolina. Nice try. Let me see, is there anything under here? Anything like directly under North Carolina? No. Like anything that could provide us an extra clue, I mean. Obviously the other license plates could probably be ignored. Is there a separate cause uh, well please don't freeze on me, game, Jesus. I don't suppose there are any more uh, license plates. Seems to only be those ones on the wall. Ah, uh, boy, oh boy. 
Huh. Okay, well, uh, yeah, I'm gonna guess for now. I'm wondering, where else do we have a locked door? There's... A locked door that needs a passcode. We already opened up the three number thing right there. Let me... Let me go up there to sort of demonstrate as I'm talking. Yeah, we already opened up this three thing here. Is this keypad just for the same door? Yeah, okay, it's just... This is just two keypads for the same door. I guess it's... Is it somehow possible for the... Yeah, actually, I guess if you're playing through the game a second time and you already know the number for that, for that keypad to presumably activate the elevator, you could come down here from the other direction and then you might want to put in this number here to open the door from the other side. That's cool that they put that in and even think of that option. Um, so, hmm, is there anything else labeled North Carolina? I highly doubt it, but damn, that's from Iowa, so that's not, hmm, that's not going to help us. All right, well, uh, for now, I don't. No. I can't remember another... I'm trying to remember. I really cannot remember another door that had a four or six digit pad on it. If I look at the map that I've written down, maybe that'll help me remember, but I kind of doubt it. Um, maybe it's because he says it's to the, uh, the tower. In his notebook here. Let me read it again. Uh, Cecil was concerned about any survivors not having access, so it was decided that we would conceal the code in part of this house and give the residents locations as they were being chambered. I also had him change the upper tower access code. He says upper tower, and I assume he means that upper tower. But maybe he means the bleeder? Maybe he's talking about that tower? What? That tower right there? Maybe he's talking about that. Maybe that needs a four or six digit code. And maybe that is something entirely different. I don't know. We'll keep thinking about it and uh, we'll try some more stuff when we come back next time because I'm out of time for this episode, unfortunately. So I will see you all later. I hope you have enjoyed it. Bye bye. Thank you.